We're just two weeks away from the official announcement of the Samsung Galaxy S9 and we've had so many leaks and rumors. What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and in this video we're going to be doing a final roundup of all of these leaks and rumors to give you everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S9. So let's get straight to it. The first thing which a lot of you guys probably already know is that we're going to have two versions of the Samsung Galaxy S9. There's going to be a regular S9 as well as an S9 Plus similar to what we had last year although these two devices are going to be quite a bit more different. The first difference is going to be in the display size 5.8 inches for the S9 and 6.2 inches for the S9 Plus quite similar in terms of size compared to last year. These are going to be infinity displays so we're going to be having minimal bezels and from one of the first renders it did seem like the bezels on the left and right were going to be slightly larger compared to what we had last year. However, having seen some more recent leak renders, in particular one that we had from Evan Blass again, which was the Samsung Galaxy S9 sitting on a DeX unit, the bezels actually seem very similar to what we had last year. Now with renders, they are only renders and sometimes devices do look slightly different when they are released. So I would expect the bezels to be quite similar to what we had last year. They are gonna be very, very small. And I don't think too many people are gonna be disappointed. In terms of the aspect ratio, it's gonna be 18.5 by nine once again. And we still are gonna be having Quad HD plus resolution. So that's gonna be a very high pixel density for both devices. And they're also gonna be super AMOLED displays like we had last year. So we're going to have deep blacks, very vibrant colors. Samsung makes some of the best displays in the market right now. The S8s were some of the best last year, as well as the Note 8 and even the iPhone 10. That display was made by Samsung. So we can expect some great displays here on the S9s. Now, another thing that's going to be quite similar to last year is the build and design. We're still looking at a metal frame with curved glass panels on the front and back, which are also going to be symmetrical to make them easier to hold. Now, this does mean that the the S9s are a bit of an incremental update to last year. So we did have quite a new design last year and it was kind of expected that we're going to be getting an incremental update this year. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing. And the S8s were some of the best looking devices last year. IP68 water and dust resistance is still going to be here. This was confirmed on a box leak which had all of the specifications on. And this year we're likely to have two new colors. Lilac purple which is quite fresh as well as the coral blue. Now the coral blue was a color that we had initially on the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Very, very nice color and it's nice to see that we're gonna have this back on the S9s. However, if you do wanna customize the look of your S9s, you can do so with a skin from our channel sponsor, Dbrand. Now you can already pre-order skins for the S9s from the Dbrand website and using their preview tool, you can also see what these skins are gonna look like. I'm gonna be leaving a link to Dbrand in the description below if you're interested in picking one up. Now moving on to the internals, both devices are gonna be some of the first with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor and certain markets will also have Samsung's Exynos 9810. Both of these are some of the best processors out on the market right now, so expect some super smooth performance. Now when it comes to RAM and storage, we're gonna have some differences this year between the S9 and S9 Plus. According to rumors, the S9 is gonna come with four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. And with the S9 Plus, we're gonna be having six bytes of RAM as well as 128 gigabytes of base storage. Both devices should come with a micro SD card slot, however, so you should be able to expand that. So unlike last year where both the S8s had the same amount of RAM and base storage, this looks like it's gonna change this year. And another thing that's also gonna be changing this year is the camera setup. With the S9, we're gonna be having a single camera and the S9 Plus is gonna come with a dual camera setup. So it looks like Samsung are gonna be doing something similar to what Apple do, where the iPhone 8 has the single camera and the iPhone 8 Plus has the dual camera as well as more RAM. So this is gonna separate the devices more and it might push you towards going for the larger version because of the additional features that it's gonna offer. Now, let's talk about the cameras. The cameras have been reimagined as we've seen from all of the marketing and the cameras have been the main concentration from all of the marketing material that we've seen so far. Now, why is that? Well, let's look at the primary camera firstly. This is gonna be the same on both devices. 12 megapixels with dual pixel autofocus, which is the fastest that I've tested on any smartphone. Optical image stabilization, but then we have something very, very interesting, something that we've not seen before. On the box leak, we have two apertures, f1.5 as well as f2.4. Now, initially I thought that this meant that it's gonna be for each of the cameras, the dual cameras on the S9 Plus, 
But according to leaks and rumors, we're gonna be having a variable aperture lens on the S9s. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is a first and it's actually gonna be mechanical. So it's gonna switch between these two apertures. The first being f1.5, which is, I believe the widest aperture on any smartphone right now. This is gonna be absolutely awesome to get a shallow depth of field as well as great low light performance. But if you're in a better lit situation, then by using the f2.4 aperture, you're gonna be getting more things in focus. I believe that's what the thinking behind the variable aperture is. And apparently this is gonna be done automatically by the camera. It's gonna be able to detect the scene and find out which aperture is gonna work best for it. Now this is something that's quite exciting, something that we've not really seen before and should be a great step up on the smartphone camera game. Obviously we'll be doing lots of super SAF style camera comparisons as soon as the devices are out. So make sure you have subscribed and switch your notifications to see those first. Now with the S9 Plus, it's gonna have a second camera as well. This is likely to be similar to what we've had on the Note 8. So a telephoto camera, which is gonna give you two times optical zoom with an f2.4 aperture. As well as the optical zoom, it's gonna give you a portrait mode, which something called live focus. This is something that I really like on the Note 8 because you can edit the blur after the fact and it works really, really well. Whether we're gonna have a live focus or a portrait mode on the Samsung Galaxy S9 regular version, that we'll still have to wait and see for. Now for the front facing cameras, all we know is that we're gonna have eight megapixels with autofocus. This is something that we did have last year. Some of the only devices with autofocus from the front facing cameras. Now what about video? Well, on the box leak, we saw super slow-mo. So the S8s can already record 720p at 240 frames a second. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 does, however, support 720p at up to 480 frames a second. So this is something that's likely to be here. 4K at 60 frames a second is also looking very likely. This is something that's also supported by the new processors. And when it comes to the software, it is gonna be Android Oreo out of the box with the Samsung Experience skin on top. Now the Samsung Experience skin has improved over the last few years from those TouchWiz days. And although it's not a complete stock experience, you're gonna be getting some additional features, which you may like, some of the ones that I currently like are the secure folder as well as dual messenger. Now moving on to the batteries, based on the leaks, it looks like the batteries are not gonna change from last year. So we're gonna have 3000 mAh on the S9 and 3500 mAh on the S9 Plus. So although they're not gonna be increasing in terms of the physical size, it does look like we're gonna have more efficient batteries because of those new processors. So we should be getting better battery life compared to the S8 last year. The good thing is that the S9s are gonna come with fast charging, so you're gonna be able to get some really quick top-ups as well as fast wireless charging, which once again is very, very useful. The fast charger is gonna be included in the box. The fast wireless charger will not be. Now let's move on to the additional features that the S9s are gonna be offering. First things first, in terms of the fingerprint scanner, there was lots of talk about it potentially being within the display. This is something that has been talked about for a very, very long time. Unfortunately, it looks like the S9s are not gonna have the fingerprint scanner embedded within the display. This is still quite new technology, and we've seen some demos of this, but it looks like the fingerprint scanner within the display is gonna be for the Note 9, not for the S9s. And based on the leaked renders that we have seen so far, the fingerprint scanner is on the back. The good news, however, is that the fingerprint scanner is in a much more accessible position compared to last year. If we look at the S9s last year, the fingerprint scanner is right up here near the camera, very difficult to reach, especially on the Plus model. And this was something that I fed back on my review and lots of other people fed back on as well. Looks like Samsung have taken that on board and will be improving the fingerprint scanner on the S9s and having that underneath the cameras in a much more reachable position. As well as that, we are gonna be having the iris scanner like we've got on the S8s on the Note 8. Now this may be improved a little bit and maybe a little bit faster compared to last year. We're also gonna have facial recognition. Now facial recognition, we also had this on the S8s on the Note 8. However, it isn't 3D facial scanning like we've got the iPhones. This year, there are some rumors that the facial recognition is gonna be improved and more secure. Now let's move on to the audio. First things first, I think a lot of you guys will be happy to know that it's looking like we are still gonna be having the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. If we look at the latest leak from Evan Blast, the one of the S9 on the DEX unit, we can clearly see 
a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the same place that we had it on the S8 last year. This is a very, very positive thing because the headphone jack is something that we're seeing less and less of. Even Google decided not to include it on the Pixels. So it's great that we should be seeing this on the S9s. From the box leak as well, we can see that we are gonna be having earphones tuned by AKG. This is something that we also had last year. These earphones are pretty good and worth around about $100. So these are included in the box. And furthermore, we are gonna be having stereo speakers tuned by AKG. This is something else that a lot of us fed back on last year with the S8s that we only had the single bottom firing speaker, which is okay, but it's not great and you can definitely cover it up quite easily. This year, however, we are gonna be having stereo speakers. This is likely to be one bottom firing as well as one in the earpiece. Now, Bixby is likely to stay. I know there's mixed opinions on Bixby, so we are likely to have that dedicated Bixby button. I've done a video about Bixby. If you do wanna check it out, I'll link that in the cards. Personally, I do find it quite useful because it does offer a few things that other voice assistants don't offer right now, but this will come down to your personal opinion and preference. Now, moving on to the announcement and release dates. Unpacked invites have already gone out. This is gonna be on the 25th of Feb at MWC. So this is when we're gonna officially hear about the new S9s. And then pre-orders are likely to go live on the 1st of March with shipments going out on the 16th of March. So very, very soon, just around the corner. Now when it comes to pricing, unfortunately we haven't had many leaks about pricing as yet. Although many are saying that we can expect similar pricing to what we had last year because these are gonna be incremental updates. However, because the S9 Plus is now gonna have more features compared to the S9 regular, I don't know if this is gonna affect the price. We're gonna to have to wait and see. So there we have it guys. That is everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. I'm very excited, especially to see what the cameras will be performing like. What do you guys think? Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And remember, we're gonna have lots of hands-on coverage of the S9s as soon as they're out. So make sure you subscribe and switch on notifications if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV, and I'll see you next time.